Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's session, we are going to look at uh, Rhino Polyhedra, uh, which is a tool that could be added to Rhino uh, to model all kinds of uh, different uh, hedron geometries. Uh, this is normally used for uh, multiple types of applications like jewelry design or mathematical modeling. And we're going to actually develop this in a few exercises uh, for a digital uh, fabrication exercise and parametric design uh, assignment. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, we'll be working on a base shape and develop some sort of parametric variation uh, on, uh, on the shape and try to fabricate it. Um, or prepare it for fabrication. So I'll be covering uh, these sorts of digital fabrication um, tutorials in the, um, in, the, in the next few weeks. So this is a tool, uh, you can download it on Food for Rhino website and all you have to do is drop it in Rhino. And you get this uh, menu here. Uh, if uh, this doesn't load automatically, what you can do is you can right click to any toolbar, go to show toolbar, go all the way down and Rhino Polyhedra will be uh, installed or located here. And uh, surprisingly, this tool also comes in uh, Grasshopper. So um, uh, I'll be primarily showing you how you can actually get to a polyhedra geometry in Rhino. But we will also do a quick application and plot some of the variations um, as an array in Grasshopper, so we can also access these shapes uh, parametrically. So let's get uh, right down to it. So we can actually uh, click on this uh, polyhedron and this will prompt a menu where you can choose a category and uh, you can also look for a specific type of polyhedra here. And this, um, this menu might seem a bit complex, but if you uh, choose all, all basically has all the types of polyhedra, I think there are over 690 uh, or 692 total shapes. And we can check that number in Grasshopper. Uh, but there are also sub branches. For instance, you, you have uh, Archimedean, Catalan Halls, uh, Geodesic Cubes, um, Propeller Solids, all kinds of different uh, subgroups uh, defined in mathematics. And uh, we, we also have the platonic shapes. For instance, if you go to platonic solids, we have our basic cube, uh, dodecahedron, uh, icosahedron, octahedron, and tetrahedron. So let's say we want to create a, um, a dodecahedron that is made out of uh, pentagons. Um, I can choose the polygon I want, a polyhedron I want, and then uh, basically place it anywhere, let's say at the origin and define some sort of a scale factor, let's say five, and that will give me a mesh geometry that is made out of um, these pentagons. So if I if I choose the shaded view, you can see these are, this is the base platonic solid we can actually work with. Um, so the rest is pretty much uh, similar, uh, but what we are going to, what we are most interested in is the polyhedron tool and this array of polyhedra and choose a type of geometry that we want to work with for a parametric design application. So how do we access it in Grasshopper? Um, this actually comes in under Mesh Geometry, uh, the plugin. Uh, so what you can do is basically um, look at the dropdown. It's basically the same menu. And it's opposite Mesh Geometry, that's why it's located under the Mesh tab. And what I want to do is um, access this polyhedron tool uh, parametrically. So by default it doesn't produce anything because it needs a name input and a category. So we need to actually specify these. It takes a plane where the polyhedron will be located and a scale factor and we have to supply uh, its name. Uh, so where do we find the names? If you go to the same tab uh, we have the polyhedron names and uh, for polyhedron names to work we need categories. So if you go to that same menu again, uh, we have the categories here as well. So the categories are actually um, just a stable input. It basically has the same menu as the polyhedron tool in Rhino. Uh, and this has different types of um, inputs. So you can see that um, the first list con 
uh, contains all of the polyhedron, second list contains all of the Archimedean Catalan halls. You can also look at the output by placing a panel here. Um, so these will be the um, types of polyhedron we can choose from. And if I place them into uh, polyhedron names, this will give me names of the polyhedron. So uh, the first thing I want to do is to, not to supply all the categories. And uh, so for instance, we can actually access one of the lists here and see what list we actually look at. So um, my rundown list is here. Let's say we want to uh, access, um, let's see, um, platonic solids. Let's see, let's find its index. Platonic solids are index number 19. Uh, so what I can do is get all the categories in and let's supply index number 19 and that will actually give me the platonic solids as a string. This will be the parameter for the polyhedron names. And when I supply this, I get the polyhedron names under that category, which are cube, dodecahedron, icosahedron, uh, octahedron, and tetrahedron. So these are the polyhedras. Uh, now, if I want to choose any of the specific names among that list, uh, I can do another list item, um, but this time we only have four items. So let's say we want to get a cube. Um, then I can look at the first index and um, I'm, going not, I'm not going to change the origin and the name is going to be um, the cube. So this will uh, give me that corresponding shape. And if I change the index, you can see that this is actually changing. So I'm going to just limit this to 10. And you can see that uh, after four, it actually wraps the value. So it actually at five, it goes to cube again. So uh, this is a single list and we can look at all the, um, all the types of polyhedra inside of this list. Um, now it might be a bit tedious to find um, the right type of polyhedra. I mean, cre creating all of these might also be computationally heavy because um, uh, I believe we have uh, let's actually look at the first list. Um, if I go to the first list, which contains all of the polyhedra, uh, then we have 692 total values. Um, so uh, going one by one through all of these, some of them have uh, ring-based shapes, uh, some of them have uh, other types of geometries, but let's actually make this 691, which will be my maximum index value. Um, so you can see that there are a bunch of different shapes. Uh, so what I want to do is um, not go through them one by one, but look at an interval. Let's say we want to look at hundreds of these. How can we actually do that? So I, I want to get an index, uh, an interval inside of these polyhedron names um, and look at um, a chosen batch of 100 polyhedras. So uh, one way of doing that would be to actually spread uh, these um, along a grid and we have to create a grid. So uh, the simplest way of creating a grid would be to use series. And let's say I want my grid to be 10 by 10 and I want it to be two dimensional. So we have to do cross reference and supply A and B um, together so that we get 100 values. And if I construct points using these as the X and Y inputs, this would be my grid. Um, and we can actually use this as an input, but then we will create the same polyhedra uh, on all of these uh, on all of these points. And one thing I notice is that the grid size is not large enough for these polyhedron to be modeled. So what we need to do is uh, spread them out a bit. Um, so we need 10 indices in the X and Y direction, but we need more interval for them. So let's actually supply four as a stepping size for our grid so that we can uh, spread them out a bit more. Um, now, this is actually the first step of getting a batch of polyhedra to look at. Uh, the second um, part would be to actually um, change the type of polyhedra. So we don't want to generate the same name uh, per index. We actually want to uh, get a different one. Um, so how do we actually do that? 
So we can we can achieve that by uh, actually using the range function. Uh, so if you remember, range uh, gives us um, values between a domain. Um, so I can actually construct a domain, and this domain uh, could be the interval I want to look at. For instance, let's say we want to look at 100 values, and I want to start at 0, and I want to add 100 values to it. And I can do it like this. So if I do start from 0 and add 100 to 0 and go to 100, uh, the reason why I'm building this relationship is because I want the domain to have 100 values. Um, this actually would give me, uh, I mean, range would give me one more, I think. So if I supply this here and 100 here, um, I actually get 101 values. Uh, so technically speaking, um, this would, uh, we need actually one less. So what I can do is right click here, set an expression and type in x minus one, or you can simply do a subtraction and subtract uh, value one uh, from this and supply it here. Um, let's see what happens here. Now we supply 99, this actually doesn't work. Um, what we could do is maybe do the reverse. So set up our interval to be from zero to 99, uh, but instead add one. So let's try this. Um, this may not also work. Yeah, it gives me decimals. So instead of that, what I'm going to do is, um, this is actually uh, making it more complex, but um, I'm going to go from zero to 100, but I need the indices um, to be, um, I need the total values to be 100. So what I can do is uh, just do a shift list here and turn off wrapping and feed in minus one so that we can actually get rid of the last value. Um, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I want to be able to change the interval or the starting value for the, the hundred uh, polyhedrons that we want to look at. And I want the output to generate hundred values. So the, the, the interval would be specified, but the total number of values should always be hundred. So for instance, if I want to start from 25, I need the range to go from 25 to 125, um, sorry, 124, which will be hundred values total. Um, and range automatically gives me one more value, including the, the end of the range. Um, that's why we have to get rid of the last value in the list. Um, so this would be actually my indices. Um, for instance, uh, let's actually reduce this to zero. And what I can do is use this as my index mapper. So I can do list item here again, um, or we can use this one too. I'm actually going to disable this for now. And if we use the shift list value, now you would see uh, that we are getting actually 100 names here, the first 100 uh, polyhedral names in the, uh, in the all list all polyhedra list. So uh, when I supply this, uh, this would actually match uh, all these grid points with an index. For instance, if I right click here and enable this, um, these are the first 100 polyhedras inside of this list. And we can also assign a value for all of them. For instance, if I were to do point list and place a number here, um, these will be the indices of uh, these polyhedra. So for instance, the first polyhedra is here at index zero. This is one, two, three, four, five. And this is how it goes. Uh, so for instance, if I, let's say I want to work on a polyhedra here that I like, I can temporarily hide these. Um, let's say we found um, a polyhedra that we like. Um, let's assume, for instance, um, I like this one which is made out of, uh, it's, it's like a football, I think. Um, it's like a soccer ball. So it's made out of he hexagons and pentagons. I can turn on uh, the point uh, preview and this is at index 66. So uh, now what I can do is rather than supplying all of these items, I can just supply 66 and generate one value. For instance, I'm going to copy this here 
uh, disable this. Let's get index 66 and turn off uh, or disconnect this value here. So let's assume we are just modeling one, uh, one index. So if I supply 66, uh, that's chamfered dodecahedron. That's the polyhedra we are working with. And this is made out of pentagons and hexagons. So I can actually find uh, the type of polyhedra I want to look at by going through all of the lists. Or I can also look at subgroups and expand them uh, into an array or go, go through them one by one here as well. So this would be kind of a parametric way of accessing it. And if I were to bake it, um, this would be the geometry. So it's it's actually also giving me a bunch of things. It's giving me the curves, the um, the resulting meshes, and if the resulting polyhedron is solid or not. This was probably used for other types of purposes. But what we are interested in is um, the boundary curves. Um, we can also work with meshes, um, but we can also extract a bunch of information through the curves as well. Uh, mesh is also useful because this defines a surface where we can get vector directions if you want to model something three-dimensional on top of this. Um, but uh, this will be our uh, starting point, basically this shape, and we can model uh, something more complex on top of this. Um, so uh, let's do another interval. I'm actually going to disable this for now and replace um, the shift list function and enable the polyhedron. So uh, as I mentioned, these are uh, the first 100 indices. Uh, let's say that we want to look at another interval. Let's say we want to look at the second 100 list. All I have to do is change the starting index to be 100. And it will generate now um, the polyhedron between 100 and 200. So these are uh, the polyhedra. And I can also bake all of them and look at their geometries. Uh, one thing I noticed is that um, the model could get really heavy because it's also outputting a lot of curves. So you might want to just uh, delete the curves or just bake the meshes to look at the geometry first and choose um, a type of polyhedra you would like to work with. So these are, for instance, we also have a shape here that uh, probably didn't uh, model appropriately or maybe it's this is how it looks. I presume it's going to be uh, something like this as well. Uh, so some of them have a lot of faces, some of them have less faces, um, and these all have specific names to themselves. Um, this is probably a rhombus dodecahedron. Um, and we are actually going to uh, work with expanding this list and look at a shape that we like and then model some parametric uh, surface application on top of it. Uh, so this is a way of expanding uh, the range of polyhedrons to look at. You can actually use Grasshopper to automatically do this uh, as well. Um, so in the next video, we are going to uh, do a quick parametric application and work on the polyhedra itself.